All right, it is just disgusting out there with the indexes hitting new lows altogether. Stocks are completely in the toilet. And even the almighty Apple is wobbly and everyone is talking about this being just the beginning of another epic leg down in the market. Some say 20%, others 50%, and yes, there's even some experts out there saying 90% down from here. Bottom line, it is ugly out there, and with Palantir enjoying just a short rally after that pitiful earnings call, and all the macro stuff getting a lot worse, I think we may need to view Palantir just a little bit differently than we have been before. So I will give you the truth with Palantir, and I just asked in exchange for you to gently tap that like button and consider subscribing too, as the stats say only 35% of you guys who watch me regularly aren't subscribed yet. So that means, you know, 65% of you guys are, but 35% of you aren't. And out of those that are subscribed, only 17% have notifications turned on. I hear your comments, guys, and that's exactly why a lot of you guys miss my videos sometimes, because YouTube is just stupid and makes you turn on notifications, despite the fact that you're already subscribed to the channel. So basically you gotta subscribe, then click notifications, and then you may actually see my videos up here in your feed. And I know we all complain about it all the time to YouTube, it's just dumb. All right, so let's talk about what all is wrong with Palantir right now. You guys come to the channel for the truth, not unicorns and snow cones and fantasy world. So let's be honest here right now. The first and most obvious reason is everything is down right now to begin with, especially growth stocks and stocks that are not profitable have been especially hammered and unfortunately, Palantir kind of checks both those boxes. I mean, they are not turning a profit yet, and I know a lot has to do with how they report and use their balance sheet, but doesn't matter, bottom line, they are not going to show profitability anytime soon, and they firmly fit in the growth stock category. But that reason alone is not a reason to sell in my mind. Tesla has fallen despite posting record numbers and basically lapping the competition repeatedly, churning out big profits in the most challenging environment it's probably ever been in. So should you sell Tesla now just because the stock is beaten down? You don't sell strictly based on the price action in my mind as a long-term investor. However, you do sell based on something fundamentally changing with the business. Unfortunately, there is another problem with Palantir that quite honestly has to do with Palantir itself, and that is this. They have not communicated their value, what they do, and what they can bring to the world effectively at all. With the Ukraine invasion happening, you immediately saw the value they could bring to situations such as those and the ripple effects it's having across Europe because of that invasion. But management failed to capitalize on it in any substantial way. Then earnings came and despite having valid reasons for the performance being less than ideal and some of it actually being outside of their control, they communicated none of it. They basically went off on tangents and long-winded answers to nothing in the end to the average investor. It is a hard business to understand and part of management's role is to educate investors on what it is they do, what the value proposition is, and explain financial issues in a concise and coherent manner so everybody understands why your finances happened the way they happened. It's always a big discussion in my group as to if it's the right investment or not, because so much of what they do is not easy to explain and we teach all the time that you need to understand what you are investing in in the first place. If you don't know how to work through that problem to get to the right answer or know how to actually value a stock like Palantir in the first place, create a plan for it, or need help building up income because you are at a dry powder buying the dip that continues to dip, we have you covered in the Market Insiders private group as the supercell is ending tomorrow and the price will never be lower again. And we help you through five courses, hundreds of tutorials and lessons. We got tons of tools. We do live Q and A's weekly. Tons of exclusive videos are released every week and you get direct access to myself and a group of six and seven figure investors. And we have some exciting tools coming to you in just the next few weeks. So make sure you check out the pinned comment and see what all is offered and lock in your price for as long as you stay a member today before it's gone forever. But the bottom line is this, Nothing has been effectively communicated at all, and it is actually keeping many people who want to invest in Palantir and see the potential on the sidelines for now, despite these great prices. And finally, we have good old fashioned FUD around Palantir that always seems to pop up. Now, yes, if they communicated better, that would make it so easy for the bears to ding Palantir and beat them all up. But the bears are coming regardless, so you are absolutely right there. They're always probably gonna come for a stock like this. People have also been complaining about the stock-based compensation for years now, despite it consistently going down 
And my guess is those people probably also don't understand the pay landscape when pulling in the best of the best and probably don't understand corporate accounting and taxes either at the corporate level. I think many of those folks would also be shocked to learn how much compensation is given as stock with many retail favorite stocks and great companies overall, but that's not the narrative around those companies like it is for Palantir. And then you have the people freaking out about Alex being Alex and banging a freaking table. Remember, I don't watch reaction videos to earnings in the first place. I don't watch a lot of YouTube, period, to be honest. So when the reaction video started rolling in, my group started to freak out a little bit about the stock because the reaction videos were freaking out about the stock itself and then they were just basically producing those types of videos. So I did what I always do in these type situations where we have a freak out in the group. I basically set up a live stream to go live in a little bit and then I went and I actually listened to the earnings call itself and I just didn't view it the same way as everybody else did. It wasn't great by any stretch, and honestly, I didn't even notice the banging on the table, and having listened to earnings calls for decades now, that was not even close to the worst earnings call that I've ever heard. I mean, not even in the ballpark, and more importantly, it wasn't even the worst one I've heard from Palantir in my opinion, so I just didn't get what all the noise was about in the first place. Now, I'm not saying I'm right and all those other people are wrong or anything else like that. I just didn't see it the same way and it absolutely reinforced my decision to never watch any reaction videos and just do the work myself instead. And I suggest you guys do the same as well, at least at first. And then if you wanna watch those reaction videos after you've listened to the earnings call and gone over the numbers and everything else, then have at it and go watch them. But at least you know and already have your notes about it before ever turning on those videos. So given all this stuff we just discussed, have I changed my mind about Palantir? The answer is yes. I feel I need to change my portfolio as it pertains to Palantir and let me explain why. Now to be upfront and to kind of set the stage here, it's important for you to understand that I would not feel comfortable with a portfolio makeup of a guy who was kind of all in on Tesla, for example, or just owns two or maybe three, maybe four stocks. Now I'm not saying it's wrong or that they are dumb and I'm right or anything else like that. I'm just saying it's not right for me. And remember investing is personal. Each one of us are different. And that's it. That's all that I'm trying to say. And so Palantir is not 80% or even 30% of my portfolio. Also, I'm not a trader. I'm a long-term buy and hold investor. And I've said from the start of this channel, buy great companies at great prices and just hold. And if Wall Street wants to mess around and give you a discount, you simply buy more. It really is that simple. And I have lived it for over 20 years after making every mistake there is to make and all that good stuff like that. But Luke, nobody has ever lost money taking a profit. Well, taking a $600 profit in Apple in the early 2000s cost me a million dollars over the long run if I wouldn't have sold that stock and just held onto those shares. That is losing money in my book. Also, part of being a long-term investor is avoiding overpaying too in those times. I did not buy Palantir when it was ridiculously overpriced, even though I love the stock and I warned that people were overpaying for it. It's the same warning I gave for Tesla many times before when it got overvalued and I warned against it in the penny stock craze too. I have seen it many times before over the past 20 plus years. It always ends badly. But I didn't sell either because I'm not a trader. The problem with selling is then I have to pay a tax, then I have to find a new entry point again and hope it falls to that point, and then the stock has to go back up even more than before to make up for the taxes that I already have to pay. That is just way too much stress for me and effort that is not worth it in my eyes for me. So despite the market being red hot and being up on a lot of great stocks, I decided not to sell a single share of anything. And instead I was focused on buying great stocks like Apple at 117 that were clearly undervalued while the market was completely on fire. There is always a deal in the stock market, even when it's red hot. And yes, sometimes it's an incredible stock like Apple that are on sale that everybody wished they would have bought in hindsight. So because I did not buy the hype rallies and the bulk of my position was built after it had fallen to below fair valuation, I've been able to aggressively lower my cost basis, getting very close to single digits here and I am absolutely loving it. However, that is where the change in my portfolio comes. The more I study and read and analyze Palantir, the more I want to own this company. And yes, your study doesn't start and end when you decide to buy. I'm constantly studying companies, especially the growth companies like Palantir that are more complex, more nuanced, and easily dismissed even by some pretty smart folks out there. With Palantir, to me, nothing has fundamentally changed with the company. And if these prices stay real juicy, I will continue aggressively adding my position as I want it to represent a much larger portion of my portfolio than it does right now. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you don't know how to get a price target or how to do evaluation and want a step-by-step -step process for doing that, building wealth, 
and you want direct access to me and much more, remember to check out the pinned comment down below to become a member and at least look at everything you get. And click this video here for the stocks I'm still buying in this market and click here for exactly what I'm doing to make huge money in this market. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.